good morning uh, today we'll discuss about uh, model organisms this is one of the uh, topic in pre phd courseworks of uh, zoology uh, which is being run in a regular mode in uprtu uh, there are several model organisms as you are seeing here uh, mice isricia coli c elegans east saccharomyces cerevisiae saccharomyces pombi in plants tomato is also one of the family model and drosophila mosquitoes if you define uh, model organisms so these are specific species or organisms which are extremely uh, uh, extended uh, sorry extensively studied in research laboratories they are advance our understanding in cellular functions in development in diseases uh, we used different models for uh, defining or uh, studying different diseases like cancers alzheimers parkinsons and many more they are having ability to apply new knowledge to other organisms also i will compare drosophila which i was, uh, we will discuss today with the human as said uh, drosophila as a model organisms so we'll discuss their characteristics uh, its uh, arthropods in uh, class insecta order is diptera diptera means uh, is having two wings like mosquitoes house flies and genus is drosophila and species group is melanogaster and in that we are using the species which in our lab we are going to use for the research purposes is ananese so the model organisms which we will study in particular is drosophila ananese usage in research we will discuss in coming slides uh, there are several developmental disorders which we can study which we can't study in higher organisms including human which is having ethical concern also so that advantage uh, which we are having in drosophila ke form development zygote up to its uh, adult we can study every phases of its under the microscope these are having conjoined genes which are having similar functions with the human mouth they are having different functions so repeated so uh, there are several neurological disorders also like triple repeat diseases parkinsons alzheimers fragile x syndromes in cancers we are having different models in drosophila will use that also you have one can use that also besides if we are going to compare drosophila with the human certainly we are having certain limitations because uh, the blood circulatory systems is very advanced uh, the um, neurological and other organs systems which are well developed in higher organisms uh so in that cases if we compare with the drosophila certainly we are having limitations on that part in our laboratory uh we are going to study the genetic basis and some biochemical aspects so i have again just comparing uh the models which are being used for the genetic studies this is the worm it's a nematode Cynoraptitis elegans, C. elegans, very familiar. It's having a limited number of cells, and we can see uh, under the microscopes also their functions. So, because of that transparency, people are using C. elegans in aging studies and physiological studies also. This is one of the weed, uh, Arabidopsis thaliana, in plants. It is used. It's a fruit fly. Drosophila is a common name is fruit fly. Uh, mouse. In fishes, zebra fishes are also very familiar in 
genetic studies and this is is which is a eukaryotic but a single cell so it's also having advantage of that if you see drosophila species so one can study genetics and developmental biology fully uh, we'll discuss some part of that they are physiology and they have behavioral aspects also many diseases causing gene in humans they are having corresponding homologs in fly genome also uh, there are several models in drosophila in which we can study cancer neurodegenerative diseases drug addiction diabetic obesity etc in our laboratory we are going to use drosophila ananasi uh, it's a female fly there are differences in male and female as we are talking earlier in slides about their characteristics because females are larger in size because they have to lay eggs and that eggs which are laid in nature they are exposed to several factors including uh, parasites uh, environmental stresses and uh, several others so because of that they have to lay egg in large number so because of that nature has selected females to have the bigger size so that they could lay uh, large number of eggs they are relatively very short life is born uh, at 25 degree celsius since they are poikilotherms they can't control their uh, body temperatures so on 25 degree celsius the average growth your life cycle is 10 days if we decrease the temperature their life span would increase and if we increase the temperature slightly up to 27 degree celsius then uh, experiments have suggested that their life cycle fasten that means they will complete their life cycle within 8 or 9 days culture uh, culturing of flies is very cost effective in comparison to mice and others because we don't need very sophisticated equipments we don't need uh, much caring a variety of genetic and molecular tools are available in drosophila uh, we'll discuss one of few in coming slides the complete uh, genome sequences have been completed through human genome projects uh, currently it has been estimated that flies drosophila they are having 13500 genes if you see the life cycle of drosophila so female male uh, they lay the egg the fertilize eggs then they go in the cycle of metamorphosis first in star larva then it develops into second in star larva and then third in star larva from the third in star larva we take out the polyteen chromosome and several studies have been carried out on that then it again metamorphoses and goes to become pupa uh, this is the matured pupa which is going to eclose and then finally after eclosion we get the adult fly so it's having a complete metamorphosis which is a typical characteristics of dipteran we culture drosophila flies in the lab we use uh, vials uh, bottles for their culturing uh, for culturing we prepare the food and the food is having following ingredients agar agar for generation purpose maize powder is a carbohydrate source crude sugar it's again a ready source for carbohydrate is powder which is giving the protein part plus several others nutrients vitamins etc then nepesin is a fungicide to avoid any kind of uh, infections peat propionic acid also which is also a uh, retarder for parasites particularly fungi and we use water this i have given a table one unit that is uh, estimate around 2400 ml if we are using uh, one unit of food that makes around uh, 200 ml bottles uh, then uh, if you are preparing one unit of food 
then in that uh, we could make uh, approximately 50 55 bottles of 200 ml if we are using half unit or one fourth unit so accordingly to our need we prepare the food 1200 ml and 600 ml and so on so first we prepare the agar agar for generation purposes meanwhile we weigh maize powder crude yeast and nepasin propionic acid is a liquid and if we add in boiling then its nature would be destroyed so after the preparation of agar agar we mix these three parts and go for continuous stirring once it become prepared we see whether uh, gelation is seen or not if it is okay then we remove from the gas burner and after a wait of 5 to 10 minutes we mix the propionic acid properly and then pour in bottles or vials or petri dishes whatever our use is here i'm saying uh, showing uh, one slide in which morgan which uh, who selected uh, josephilla for genetical studies and from here josephilla pick up the uh, momentum and it became once it was considered as the uh, cinderella genetics still involved over um, several laboratories they uses josephilla for uh, genetic biochemical and physiological studies breezes and stotman they made polytene chromosomes very popular and they mapped uh, different alleles genes for studies here i'm coming directly since uh, it's related to the phd course works and what we are going to do in our laboratory uh, we are working on certain aspects of longevity as in in flies which is comparable to human also so here i'm just comparing human with drosophila flies if you see the digestive tract nervous system body organization circulation excretion skeleton or muscle systems in flies comparatively in the form of color uh, this has been compared with the human model also which is very much uh, similar if we see not only with the physiological aspect if we see the axis also like body axis in human as well as in flies or drosophila anterior posterior axis flies are also having anterior position and posterior similarly dorsal and ventral position is also fixed similarly right and left sides are also fixed why i am talking about this because uh, if during the course of development anterior posterior dorsal or ventral positions are left uh, sorry uh, left or right sides are not decided then different organs which are uh, in future would develop they would be dislocated so because of that during the development these axes are fixed and on that further growth or uh, developments occurs here i just try to show some kind of developments in human and drosophila in this slide we are just comparing with the leg development one of the examples there are several uh, um, several genes which are associated with these developments in coming slides during the uh, next sessions we will discuss one by one about all these aspects during developmental genetics uh, which is in the course of pre phd course of zoology we will discuss in detail the genetic basis of its development uh, today our motto is just to familiarize the students with the drosophila and let's talk about its applications and its applied Uh, aspects similarly if you see the anterior posterior axis there is one gene a uh, group of genes homeotic genes we call they makes the homeobox which are conserved in the animal system 
So that homeotic genes, during the course of evolution, it is selected. So in, uh, it's responsible for uh, giving a pattern which is having uh, similarity with the flies. The same gene which is expressed from Tenophora, Porifora, up to Cardates in the human and then in different uh, taxa or groups. So that is having some kind of similarity which we can study uh, through its uh, evolutionary part. Here I am comparing the photoreceptors are part in human as well as in Drosophila. So we will discuss in coming sessions in detail about all this. Similarly, olfaction system, smelling in flies and human can be compared. During 90, uh, 80s, uh, Muslim Bollard and her group, they studied on the developmental part of Drosophila and because of that she got Nobel Prize in 1995 with her colleague Edward Lewis and this paper came in the cover page of uh, Nature as shown here. She studied different genes associated with the development of uh, flies. These are gap genes, payroll genes and segment polarity genes. After that, homeotic genes expresses. So, you see, gap genes means here uh, they have given one examples of Krupal, which is one of the gap gene. If Krupal is mutated, you see, some part of uh, fly skeletons are missing. So, that missing or mutations creates a gap and because of that gap, the size of this larva becomes shortened. Similarly, parallel genes, even skipped, even an odd skip two genes are there. One expresses in event segment, then odd segment, then event segment, then odd segment, like that. If that is mutated, then some segments are missing and because of that size again reduces. Then there are segment polarity genes that gives polarity to genes anterior, posterior and like that. Again, there are several genes associated with axis formation. For example, in anterior part development, the main gene which is responsible for giving anterior side is bipart. Similarly, in posterior, there are a number of genes like Todor, Nano, Vasa. They are responsible for posterior, terminal, then for dorsal ventral, pipe, nodal, wind, ester. They are responsible for giving dorsal or, uh, dorsal or ventral sites. Once that part is decided, similarly, uh, like here it's shown, anterior and telson means posterior part, head, thorax and abdomen. So head, thorax and abdomen have been fixed out. Now, uh, these are pole cells. During the course of development, as you will see in the next, uh, is a time which is given for the development events. During the stage one, two, four, uh, up to two hours, cleavage occurs, then two to uh, three hours it becomes blastoderm, then gastrulation, then germ band elongation, then retraction of germ band, head involution and dorsal closure, and finally up to 13 to 22 hours of development, differentiation occurs in flies. If you see that differentiation in uh, microscopes, uh, scanning electron microscope, you see three pole cells are there which are future 
germ cells are then segmentation occurs these three parts makes head then thorax t1 t2 t3 and then there are eight abdominal segments and by the 22 hours all differentiation occurs and now we can see one typical larva if we compare that part so in we can see how different organs are located in larva and reflected in the future flies so that is means shown here in flies or in um, larva there are certain mass of lump of cells which we call imaginal disc these imaginal disc become the future organs in the adult fly as you said uh bridges and their groups they work too much in uh on sorry on uh, polyton chromosomes these are gen chromosomes which are specialized because of indoor application they become a thread like and so because of that it's called polyton poly means many teen means thread there is no uh separation so continuous several rounds of indoor applications give them a uh, structures like polyton they were discovered initially by balviani in 1881 in salivary gland of dospela third insta larva as i told earlier and here i am showing the polyton chromosomes in d melanogaster dospela melanogaster it's having four chromosomes third right arm then third left arm we call 3r 3l similarly two left 2l and 2r and one x chromosomes and fourth chromosomes which is embedded are very shorter in size and sometimes remain in chromocentres the mid part the same polyton chromosomes uh here i'm showing in uh drosophila enanesi different inversions which are polymorphic in nature cosmopolitan in distribution also this one is alpha inversions in 2l second left arm of dosphila adanesi inversion means uh, some segments become inverted like we say 1 2 3 4 5 6 <laughs> suppose there is inversion for second third and fourth so what it would be 1 4 3 2 and then 5 and 6 so number is changed and because of that number uh, gene sequence is also sent and of that gene sequence is translated definitely that will give another kind of protein and because of that flies behavior or flies uh, physiology would change so number of studies have shown that these inversions are adaptive in nature they are having significance uh, and several studies have been carried out and proved it similarly this one is delta inversion in three third chromosomes left side and this one is eta inversion which is very close to chromocenters on third right 3r there are uh, several systems several tools which are very much very frequently used in drosophila one of them which is very popular also is us gal4 system we will discuss we will have a full um, presentations on these tools and its approaches i'm just showing that there are among different tools us gal4 system is still very popular to make 
a precise gene uh, transfer. His uh, wild type flies and this flies is having extra eye where antenna should be. So at the place of antenna, a uh, gene is changed in a such a way that that eye is now uh, shown here. Similarly, uh, there is misexpressions of eye on the leg. So using Galfour system, we can use gene studies and their functions at different system. Here I am having a table in which different genes which are found in human like Hox gene. In Drosophila also is Hox because it is fixed to the animal uh, kingdom. So this is responsible for alteration of anterior posterior identities. Similarly Poxis is uh, eyeless, uh, responsible for defects in eyes, Salvan, Twist, and Tinman and several others. In this way, uh, these are the mutants of Drosophila and NSA which uh, I am having in my laboratory. Uh, these mutants were created by um, crossing with the other mutants. So initially I was having sprayed mutations which was rediscovered in our laboratory in BHU uh, which was crossed and that spread allele is on the second chromosomes. So I choose the second chromosome mutants uh, curly, ebony and sepia and cross with the spread one and by that way we created a mutant having four different phenotypes. It's having curly wings, sepia eye, spread wing and their combinations. So because of that uh, I'm maintaining 16 different mutants which are located on second chromosomes. Uh, these mutants are being used in our laboratory for uh, aging related studies. So our emphasis is on uh, as I told initially that we are studying certain aspects of longevity. So I have completed one project of uh, SERP DST and then second project uh, which was on nutritional genetics and the role of mitochondria. In first project we increased the Drosophila flies longevity which were in nature are about 60 to 65 days on average and we reached up to 167 days. That means more than 200 percent in flies. So based on that, why longevity increase and how to make it stable? We work on nutritional aspects. We used uh, different ratios of protein and carbohydrates and then evaluated the functions of mitochondria and results are very promising. We have submitted for publications. Now we are moving ahead the main aspects are your yeah, see uh, main aim of our studies are to rela uh, relate with the human yeah, humankind. So from the child up to old age the total life is one from the birth to death that part is longevity and over time we changes from this phase so that phases which we are seeing here is aging. Why aging is occurred? There are several theories behind that. We are working on the theory which are related with the antioxidants, free radical generations and they are scavenging. So using nutritional geometry, you are seeing the mitochondria functions, how free radicals are scavenging, what are the role of different uh, factors which are affecting the free radicals that we are studying here. It has been said by Tom Kirkwood from England, US. He said that human body is not genetically programmed from aging. It is designed for the survival. So seeing that quote, we have designed a 
certain hypothesis for their survival studies in case of human also increase in storage of energy metabolites particularly the carbohydrates and lipids which are ready source for energy to be utilized during the stress conserve these resources by reducing the rate of utilization by way of adaptation for the adaptation we are using selection experiments selection experiments on starvation selection experiments on body size selection experiments on stress itself a lower threshold need to energy metabolite for survival under stress how to reutilize or how to uh, go for a minimum threshold so that flies or organisms only survives and keep their energy intact for longevity purpose so i am here saying a website which is fully dedicated to dosophila that is fly base those who are having interest in dosophila uh, it is a must visit for them every aspects uh, studies one can find here in longevity cases if you see this table we are having different genes like nd dr6k methylsia defoxo inr uh, pi3k phosphonitrile 3 kinase chico uh, tor they are localized on uh, different arms chromosomes of flies like third chromosomes left side third third second 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 so i am particularly interested for those we are which are localized on second chromosomes if you see this is gpcr family this is fork head defoxo this is insulin receptors yeah insulin like growth factors are uh, sort of certain family so one can see their functions can correlate with their positions on the chromosomes and by selection experiment with the help of inversions and mutes uh, mutants which we are having on the second chromosomes we can go uh, in order to find or the uh, localize or associate the longevity aspects here i have work i'm just showing a few glimpses of my work uh, these are the flies which were collected from different parts of the country like jammu delhi bhopal hyderabad and kanyakumari if you see the starvation resistance how many hours they were able to starve and keep them alive we see from north to south it is increasing in both male as well as female and the significant ratio is very high if you compare with them similarly uh, if you see the number of flies and starvation resistance they are also having uh, significant aspects or uh, it is higher in females that is correlated with the water content so obviously females are having more water or they are having ability to retain more water than males and because of that they are more resistant if you see their eclosion during the life history traits early eclosion old and stop so star flies during the course of selection they retain more water content than early eclosion also if you compare the water content with the longevity we found significant uh, during uh, by regression and if we compare we developed uh, different lines large lines small lines in both male and female average life is around 
60 days and we reached up to 180 in case of females at 20 degrees Celsius. Means flies were grown up at 20 degree. If you see in females, females also reached up to once um, 70 days in that case. Here are certain limitations as initially I discussed. We can't compare uh, fully with the human. But yes, there are several genes which are having an analog or homologous to flies system. And we can study those in Drosophila also or in flies also. So, if you summarize the today's presentation, there are certain benefits of Drosophila. There are future perspectives also. People are still using and favoring Drosophila because of its cost effective, uh, very suitable for rearing and culturing, very simple model than vertebrate model, and but having obviously greater complexity than eastern bacteria. So this was the spread mutation mutations which was rediscovered by uh, me during my PhD work from Varanasi. It's having its uh, wing spread in 180 degree. It was rediscovered because uh, during World War II uh, in 1945, in Nagasaki, uh, this flight was identified by some Japanese workers. But during World War, that lab is destroyed, uh, relocated, and they lost this flight also. In 2001, I found this after almost after 55 years. So it's a spontaneous mutation and it's localized on the second chromosomes. So this is all about for today. Thank you.